In this episode, we're going to be talking about skin. Skin is really, really important that you get it right, or if you're deliberately making it wrong, that you know why you're making it wrong. Skin's one of the memory colors. Memory colors are ones that we've all actually evolved as a species to recognize innately and have even biological responses to. Things like sky, things like foliage, and things like skin. Viewers will recognize incorrect skin tones very, very quickly. They may not even be conscious of it, but subconsciously they may well be feeling a little bit ill at ease by watching someone that you have filmed with skin color that doesn't fall where they expect it to. And this is quite an important point that skin color is very consistent. It is very small footprint in terms of where it falls on the vector scope. And the reason for that is because the color of skin is made up of melanin, which is the kind of ochre yellow pigment that we all have in our skin to varying degrees that gives us that natural UV protection in our skin. Now that becomes more or less increased depending on your ethnicity or your heritage, but the hue, the color of it, is a very specific color. The other color, of course, that comes through is not just this yellow from the melanin, but also the red from the blood vessels and veins and various different parts, capillaries in particular around on cheeks and foreheads, where we have a lot of smaller capillaries that are much nearer the surface of the skin. The colors are consistent. It's the quantities that vary, and therefore the saturation levels, and also obviously the brightness levels, depending on your ethnicity. But the actual color, when we purely think about it as hue, we're actually talking about a very narrow and a very specific part of the vector scope. So it's really important that you're using equipment and approaches to your way of working that guarantee, or as best as you can guarantee, that the skin tones of your models, your talent, that they are as accurate as possible. Now, we've already talked about that all starts with good color accuracy of your light fixture, and we've established now that the light panels, Gemini's in this particular case, are particularly faithful and color accurate, and therefore that's a lot of the battle won already. We've also talked about matching sources and the importance of manually white balancing to make sure that our camera's white point is as close as possible to this, the light that's falling onto our talent so that we are not shifting in camera essentially by having a misset or a wrongly set white point. The other thing to bear in mind is that when we're actually working with these skin tones is that we're not too slavish to what's known as the flesh tone line. You can actually see the flesh tone line running up here on my vector scope in the bottom left hand corner. And you can see there's a big blob of color that's actually falling on it. It's slightly falling to the left of it. There's also bits of it that are slightly falling to the right of it. If we really drill down and start to isolate parts of the image, you'll see that actually the lipstick, for example, and also around nostrils and ears, those are the more saturated, pinkier parts of skin. We also naturally find that we're more pinky in our forehead and cheeks, as I just said, and ears as well. But then also in these areas, particularly around the neck and the areas that are further back where there's more fat layer and the, the um, blood vessels are further back, that that yellowness, that ochre yellow comes through and you can see that falling to the left hand side of the flesh tone line. Those um, broad sweeps that kind of straddle the flesh tone line on the vector scope are very normal and very natural. So if we turn off the grade, you can see it's still falling along that line. It's only once we push up the contrast and push in the saturation that we fully see where that's falling. But again, I've not deviated. I might just arbitrarily create a, an additional layer here just to prove that this is uh, not the case. But I can actually change the temperature and you can see I can warm it up and cool it down and I can also move it around more towards magenta or around more towards green. You can see as soon as I deviate from where I recorded, it looks wrong. That looks too pink, that looks too green, that looks too warm, that looks too blue. So actually doing nothing is where it works best. That's not an accident, that's because of everything that I'm talking about, about using the right equipment and using the right approaches to guarantee that things where color absolutely matters, whether that's the packaging of a specific brand you're working with, or in this case, it's a model and you're trying to be faithful to their natural look. Also in terms of skin and faces and lights, it's worth thinking about the quality of the light, which is to say the softness or hardness of the shadow that's created by that light. 
You'll notice when you see the behind the scenes for this shoot that we were often using soft boxes. In this particular scene, we also had a softened Gemini bouncing off of a polyboard and then bouncing back through another layer of diffusion. This process is known as a book light process and it creates essentially a double softening of the light. And we're doing that to create this very gentle transition from the light side of the face across to the dark side of the face, so the key side to the fill side. In this particular scene, we only used one key uh, to simulate the light coming in through a window that was next to where our model was located. So actually we're just using the, the general light walls in the uh, space where we were shooting to actively kind of fill in the shadow areas. But we've set the light at a certain intensity and we've worked to soften it to a certain level whereby we get a lovely wrap around uh, the model's face using that difference from that fill from that shadow side to the key side to really create a three-dimensional look. And three-dimensionality with lighting is really, really important, particularly with faces, because ultimately this is a two-dimensional medium that we're looking at. This is a two-dimensional representation of Tara, our model, and we can use lighting and we can also do this in post to a certain extent as well to really reinforce the fact that this is a three-dimensional thing we're looking at. The more you do that, the more you invite the viewer to kind of become enveloped by what they're seeing and really engage with the scene and it feels more vivid and realistic to them and the more engaged they will be with the story that you're trying to tell. But that idea of that soft transition from the key to the fill side is a really important way of doing that. And it, it actually is a very old trick. In fact, we all know this from when we're kids. If you draw a circle on a piece of paper, even a very young child will describe to you as drawing a circle. But if you shade in one side of that circle, they will say this is a ball or a sphere. And that's essentially what we're doing here. We're shading in one side of the face. We're creating that shadow side to softly transition to the key side, which is giving us that depth and that lovely um, transition. There's no definitive termination point. And because of the structure of the face, you know, um, Tara's got fantastic cheekbones, so we can see how we have this actual sort of undulation where the shadow creates underneath her cheekbones and then down past her jaw and then into the crook of her neck. And you end up with this lovely transition of light in terms of color accuracy, we've used all of the tricks that I've already talked to you about to make sure that this just looks great and vivid and accurate with, with minimal color correction work. And the right tools and the right methodology allow us to create these rich, vibrant, accurate skin tones, lovely soft appeal and look to the, uh, the way that light's falling on our subject's skin and catching in her eyes and gives us exactly what we were setting out to achieve.